Today we are lucky to come across so many remarkable Australians and in this next story you'll meet a Queensland brother and sister who've been dealt with a burden impossible to imagine. They'll never be able to fall asleep again. It's an incurable curse that's plagued their family for decades. Now one of them is battling the nightmare but through the heartache and the unknown is a powerful bond all of us can learn from. They are young and so beautiful, these two. They know each other's every move, every weakness and strength, the meaning behind a look and every smile. Forever the optimist. They are the same spirit in some ways, but they also share the most terrible curse, starting with Hayley and Lachlan's grandmother. My um, grandmother was sick in 1994. The family didn't know what was happening to her. She was showing all of these symptoms, um, dementia, it was happening so rapidly and it just didn't fit the pigeonhole of any of the other sort of known diseases. Um, after she passed away, she was autopsied and it was through that that they discovered that she had FFI. If you've never heard of it, you're not alone. FFI stands for Fatal Familial Insomnia, an incurable disease so rare only 50 families worldwide carry the gene. It's known as the sleeping curse, ensuring you never fall asleep again, causing clumps of abnormal and mutated proteins which attack the sleep cortex of the brain, making REM sleep impossible. Without proper restorative sleep, the body begins a cruel shutdown, resulting in insomnia, loss of motor skills, dementia and ultimately death. It's already robbed Haley and Lachlan of three aunties and uncles, as well as their mum, Narelle, who succumbed to the aggressive disease in six months. You can live with the disease unharmed until the disease triggers. And what triggers it? We don't know. No one has any Good idea. Stuff. I first met this Queensland duo back in 2016, a year after they discovered they too had the FFI gene. I want information, I want answers, and I want a bloody cure. Rather than dwell on the prognosis, they picked themselves up and set their sights on breaking the genetic chain. What else could you do? Haley and Lockie taking part in a groundbreaking study at the University of California. So hopefully they get some good results out of this. And uh, we do a few more tests tomorrow uh, and then fly home. They never really stopped. But seven years on, out of the blue, Lachlan's FFI, at the age of 35, was triggered. It is what it is. Like, it happened, you can't run from it, you can't hide from it, you can't argue with it. It's, um, that's the car that I've been dealt. When the day came, um, when you found it out, is there an obvious sign? I mean, the months leading up, I, I thought something was wrong. Uh, my memory was getting worse, and um, I just noticed something different. And uh, I knew that maybe something had happened. So I went and got tested. I probably put it off for a month or two just to see if it was something else, but. Once, once I um, got tested and, and my fears were confirmed, I was him. His diagnosis in April starting the disease's rapid shutdown of the mind and body, Lachlan struggles to sleep. Lock and I have always been so close and we've just been best mates our whole life and it's just like the thought of not having him around anymore is just too much to bear. <laughs> Sorry. I should be supporting you, not the other way around. Right. In a brutal blow, Lachlan's diagnosis came the day after his son Morrison's first birthday. Out of the despair, they did something. Somehow they got real and got busy and got on with it. <laughs> and the fairy tale wedding he and wife Claire had planned for later this year was brought forward, allowing Locke to enjoy each precious moment. What was the wedding like? Oh my God, it was the best day. It was just, Locke and I made a conscious decision to make sure it was just filled with love and joy. What was the best part of the wedding? Just seeing Locke when I walked down the aisle. For the, yeah, the first time I was walking down the aisle, I just, as soon as I looked up, as soon as I saw him, I just got this rush of just like, 
I love you. Claire has since become Lachlan's full-time carer, quitting her job and dedicating her time to raising awareness for other families living with neurodegenerative and prion diseases like FFI. She is a quiet, emotion-filled, breathtakingly loving force. For a good couple of months, I was staying up late every night researching the net, reading science journals, sending them to Haley, going, have you read this? Maybe we tried this. You know, contacting the pharmaceutical companies just in hope that we could find a treatment or a drug. Their love knows no bounds, living each day to the fullest, knowing one day it'll be Locke's last. You changed my life. You brought so much joy. You made me braver and stronger. And, you know, we made a little baby Morrison and I can't thank you enough for that. The diagnosis has also been the most terrible reality check for Haley. Just trying to balance everything, my own family, Locke's family, caring for Locke, me working, the pregnancy and all of the medical procedures that that entails. It's been about as overwhelming as yeah. She eloped with her handsome soulmate Trent in July while Lachlan was still able to walk her down the aisle. Since then, Locke's ability to walk has been taken from him. Now wheelchair bound, his speech too deteriorating. Whilst no doctor or test can predict how long Lachlan has, his wife Claire and Haley have done something extraordinary. They've stopped the disease in their family. We both underwent IVF and through that process, um, we're able to conceive children that don't have the disease. So the, the, the curse, the family curse stops here. So a cruel curse from being passed on to future generations has been stopped. That is Lachlan and Haley's mark. But how does a father and mother still living carry on? I've got soon to be two little boys that I wanna see grow up and it's just, you know, the whole, the whole scenario is just terrifying. I don't think I've done a story ever like this, and I've met, I certainly haven't met two people like you guys in my life. Everybody is dying. None of us are going to make it out of here alive. So you have to enjoy each day. I think a lot of people just like, time is so precious. And I don't think it was really until Locke's diagnosis that I really like realised how precious time is and like that's the most important commodity that anybody has. God, they're such beautiful people. Mm. Um, the family is now on a quest to make Lachlan's last few months as comfortable as can be. Uh, but also raise awareness and money to help find a cure. If you want to show your support, scan the QR code on your screen right now to find out more. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?